Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to another brand new episode of the show. Uh, a couple things I got to tell you about. Uh, first off, April 14th, we'll be back out at Naked Vine for the monthly singer-songwriter storytelling showcase. Bringing along my dear friends, Lacey Williams of Prairie Rehab, Adam Donald of Donald Woodyard Incorporated, and you probably have seen him with Kara Louise Band also, and Ian McGowan of The Good Deeds. This, uh, again, is my monthly singer-songwriter show, uh, listening room, three writers sitting on stools. It's a 7 o'clock start every second Tuesday of the month, $10 that gets you in the door, and all that goes directly to the artist. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't been out, this is a uh, my favorite day of the month for sure. It's always a really good time out there. And if you haven't been to Naked Vine in Chesterfield, you're missing out. It's a great little hidden gem out there. Serving up all kinds of wine, whiskey, tequila, and local craft beers. And uh, great live entertainment happening. Uh, well, first off, every Thursday night is a vinyl spin night. Vinny's vinyl. So come on out every Thursday night for that. Bring you along uh, your own favorite record and give it a spin. And then on Friday, March 20th, the Scandaleros return to the stage. And Saturday, March 21st, Last Dance, a tribute to Tom Petty will be out there. Full listing and details at nakedvine.net. Be sure to follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more information. And uh, also want to say a big thank you to Roughneck Beard Company and American Rambler, located in Maplewood, Missouri. Uh, you can stop by and visit them there, uh, pick up some of their wonderful beard products, uh, all sorts of, uh, beard oils, some beard oils infused with like CBD and coffee and all kinds of random things. You can find whatever you're into. Uh, they probably got a night, something that you're into. So check it all out. Uh, beard balms, junk powder, lots of different options over there. All your grooming needs you can find at Roughneck Beard Company. And uh, you can shop 24-7 all over the country at roughneckbeardcompany.com and use my code RPP15 for an exclusive 15% off during your checkout. So uh, also one big, big thank you to Heil Sound, recording this intro on my Heil microphone. Big thanks to them for their support and... Uh, Visit HeilSound.com today to check out some new gear. Uh, but that's about it for me, folks. I appreciate you all uh, tuning in. Uh, feel free to email me at rockpaperpodcast at gmail. Let me know what you're listening to, uh, what you're, uh, if you got any ideas uh, for some upcoming guests or anything you'd like to uh, pass along. Uh, also, uh, feel free to let me know if you'd be interested in a uh, stocking cap, a ball cap, T-shirt, uh, stickers, buttons, any of that stuff, I would love to send one your way. So, uh, again, Rock Paper Podcast at Gmail. Uh, I would love to hear from you. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Stay safe out there. Um, the podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the Internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. Hello, this is Joseph Belcher of St. Louis band Stoker, and you're listening to Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. This is beat paper, paper covers rock. Rock beats is the shame covers nonstop. Never know what new kind of guests that he's got coming at you. Live and direct on the spot could be rock, folk, country, or hip hop, jazz. All kind of folks that he has could be an artist or a comedian to make you laugh on the Rock Paper Podcast. Double decker fudge round, rolling round town. Shane coming at you live and direct from ground zero. He's your hero, he's your bestie. Rock Paper Podcast with Shane Presley. Podcast. Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, hanging out today with Joseph Belcher. Welcome to the show, my friend. 
Glad to be here. Uh, this is uh, this is cool, man. I'm really excited to be here, getting to officially uh, ha- hang out and with you. We we uh, what was it? Bumped into each other at uh, Gaslight. That's right. A little while back, got to meet, officially meet that night, and um, but uh, I think I don't know. What mutual friend? Uh, I think Dan Johanning uh, kind of mm-hmm. put us in contact to it with each other and helped uh, kind of make this uh, happen. So. Big shout out to Dan for yeah, Dan's a great great inter- dude. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> good, definitely a good friend. Um, I haven't seen him in a while. Me and him and uh, his wife Melissa went to see the Goo Goo Dolls at Did the you? pageant a while back, and that was a pretty good time. So the, that's awesome. The uh, what I think it was twentieth anniversary of Dizzy Up the Girl record, and they, uh, so they played of all that, and then they played a whole. The second set was all uh, deep cuts and stuff like B sides and some early material so dan was really digging that because that's the stuff he likes and mm-hmm. but uh yeah it was a fun night so anyway big shout out to dan for for his uh help in introducing us and things so mm-hmm. um but uh this is what's fun about this show for me is like it gets me an opportunity to get to meet uh newer and uh artists in town making you know making music in our city so uh I know uh, just a little bit about you. I got to listen to the EP. We have a, the, I guess this is a, the debut for yourself and the band. That's that is well. We we do have a single that's out there, but this is the first physical release right. for us. So, and yeah. then uh, so the band you uh, you I guess are the primary vocalist and songwriter for Stoker. That's right. So uh, that uh, so we have the EP, but that's the EP you said was. Just you on these recordings? Right. Just me on those. I, I went in um, about a, a year and a half ago and started recording them. Just me and layered acoustic tracks and then layered vocals. And uh, I wanted to put a band together, you know, for, for the release. Um, kind of like do a different thing with it. And um, once I started rehearsing with the guys, the, the songs kind of took on a whole different life and uh, decided to... You know, christened that Stoker, and um, we've been playing with that group for like the last year, and then finally uh, released this this EP um, just about a month ago now. Yeah, man, nice. Well, let's uh, take me back though before we get too far into the EP and everything in the band stuff. But I want to like get to know a little bit more about you and, and your start and things. Uh, so, uh, always from St. Louis, you grew up here. I did for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I, I grew up out in Augusta, so okay. out out in wine country. Yeah, you know, the like rolling hills sure. and like beautiful scenery out there. <laughs> yeah, that's not too far from my home. I like I said, I grew up in in Winsville, so not. Uh, I'm familiar with that all that area out there pretty well. So, mm-hmm. uh, you uh, you've been playing guitar for a long time. You any uh, like uh, musical family or anything like that, well, or, or where did that come from? I think I just always had an inclination towards music. Um, not really sure when it started, but I knew whenever I was in about third grade that I wanted to play the violin. They they gave us the chance to do that. Okay. And I, so I, you know, asked my parents if I could do that. Played violin all through grade school, all the way through high school. You know, and uh, about whenever I was in middle school, a buddy of mine uh, who actually plays in the group now, Chris Harper, he plays in Stoker. Um, he wanted to, he wanted to start, he wanted to start a band with me, right? So we, we, uh, started a band called Labajas. I played bass in that band and, uh, we did a lot of covers of like, uh, like brand new and like Taking Back Sunday, we, okay. you know, like kind of like in that, <laughs> sure. like the emo, emo world. Yeah. Um, but I also, you know, wrote, wrote a bunch of songs for that group too. Um, so yeah. That's kind of the beginning of the the band the band years. So right on. pretty much since about middle school, I've been you know playing in this band or that band. I, w- I work in an elementary as my day job, and uh, they just speaking of that like th- in third grade and stuff. And they just recently uh, started getting recorders. Oh really? Uh, and stuff. So all these kids are like, I uh, hear in school like it, you can hear them. And now uh, playing like hot cross buns or whatever. And so, and I'm just like, oh my gosh. Like, yeah. Uh, that's rough. I bet that, I bet that's rough. But um, maybe, yeah, hopefully they'll get better, you know. Sure. Like. 
but it's you know again it's just exciting too to introduce and kids that young to music and letting them let them run wild man let them uh discover it on their own and see what they might do with it i think so uh you know it's not gonna be for everybody but uh, there's gonna be those that definitely pursue it so yeah uh, absolutely but uh so that's cool that you uh stuck with it through through the uh through the years and things and uh so what uh what happened with that band the the what did that, that high school band that yeah, lavages just, yeah just kind of fizzled after a while yeah or? we uh, we had a lot of fun with that group it was it was myself um johnny axton and and, and chris and uh played for about a year and a half and did some like did some some of those like battle of the bands the ymca right. you know we used to play at this uh like di- different open mics and stuff um johnny but, johnny from new lingo that's right oh, I know, yeah all right i know johnny very well you've been on the show a couple times oh now. that's great that's yeah. great yeah he's a great drummer for sure um yeah. and now he's i think he's playing guitar now yeah. in new lingo but he played drums in that yeah. <laughs> in that band small world man <laughs> yeah yeah very cool uh that's a that's a fun thing too like i like when guys can or you know play multiple instruments and stuff and like you kind of know them from from one thing and then all of a sudden they they surprise you by you know joining a different band playing a different instrument or mm-hmm. whatever it is and stuff so it's like it's fun to fun to see some of that in uh, people uh or like uh you know one of the one of the probably most notable ones like a guy like uh dave grohl you know goes from Mm-hmm. Being the uh, drummer in Nirvana to absolutely being the singer guitar <laughs> player for Foo Fighters, so it's like <laughs> it's cool to see and and the, and then he's still uh, so Taylor Hawkins uh, from Foo Fighters, their drummer he they just switched places. They, they Taylor's got a new solo project called uh, uh, Taylor Hawkins and the Coattail Riders or something like hmm. that, uh, which I thought was a funny name and. And Dave Grohl was playing drums on his on the little live performance, so I thought that was funny that they switched places. So anyway, it's fun to see. But so you mentioned uh, violin uh, and bass, mm-hmm. and you play uh, guitar in Stoker, mm-hmm. and so, so uh, what? How many? You, is that it? The three or? Well, I I did like whenever I graduated high school, I went to St. Charles Community College, and I did their music program. And while I was in that program, I, I kept like the violin, the bass going, but I was a part of the choir there. Mm-hmm. Um, we had to be, you know, do piano proficiency. So I added piano to my, you know, like instrument, list yeah. of instruments. So there's a, I, I can play and I, I can actually play drums. Um, I don't really practice them like that much anymore, but I used to really be into, you know, playing all kinds of different instruments and, and like layering them into recordings and so I learned a lot from, you know, practicing and uh, like experimenting with different instruments. But now I pretty much just focus on guitar. Right. There was, you know, I played the played the bass in in pretty much all the bands except for um, except for Stoker. But at some point, I mean, I, I was I was playing guitar and writing my songs. I've I've been I've been doing that for the last ten years. And at some point, I knew I wanted to kind of like break out and do that. You mm-hmm. know, like more than just just play bass and and so that's kind of what i what i've done with with stoker and, yeah, and with the the ep so you said uh, even back then like in high school though you were writing songs and so i get uh where where do you find uh that kind of started with you for writing what do you did you always have a knack for just uh words and stuff do they come I natural i think so yeah i think so i i always um like i wrote poetry and in middle school, for sure, and um, I, I've always had like a sense for for melody, so you know it'd be pretty quick, pretty easy for me to you know combine you know a melody line with a snippet here of this poem and a snippet of that poem, and that's kind of you know when you're just kind of doing it for the first time you kind of follow the path of least resistance, you know. Right. So I was the one who had all the words and like you know. That's kind of how we. That's how we did it. Chris. Chris wrote. Um, he did write one song too, um, in the band. Chris. Chris actually has his own. Um, he's actually a pretty good, pretty good guitar player and, and songwriter too. So. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right on, man. Well, so uh, so you've been keeping uh, involved, but then uh, the time came to kind of do your own thing. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, let's so you getting into uh, we got the three songs on the EP, right? But I'm guessing you probably have tons of others that mm-hmm. recorded. So how do you choose to narrow it down to these three that to, were the ones to make the cut for the first EP? Good question. I think like you get in there and you lay down, you know, you lay down a few different songs and and after a while a certain like you can kind of pick the winners and and, pick the winners and losers like (laughs) you can kind of tell at least for me i i know like okay these songs fit together like these you know they're they're just not really gonna make the cut you know so really you know i went in there probably it was probably five songs Mm -hmm. you know and uh just like pared it down to the three i just kind of picked the ones that seemed to you know jump off the off the track a little bit, you know, instead of just like, just being there. Right. You, uh, well, you did, we did do some, uh, live acoustic Mm -hmm. playing and you played the, uh, title track, uh, how, how it is, um, here in your living room, which was a real fun, man. We, uh, they sounded really great, but, uh, so it's, I guess it's pretty close. Uh, Mm -hmm. obviously you said like the EP is very minimal with just, uh, a little bit of layering and stuff, but uh, so um, definitely check out the recorded version also. But here's uh, this is our our version live today on on the show.
Uh, but you were saying uh, you recorded the, with some of this and doing some layering and things. But <clears throat> where did you end up uh, recording all this EP? So, at? yeah, I, I did the recording over at Gaslight. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. They, they, uh, they've been, man, they've been cranking out a lot of good stuff over there. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's become a, a nice hub for, for St. Louis music. I mean, there's all sorts of, uh, even that night we I ran into you over there, it was just like, I think it was kind of a, a sad a sad gathering uh friends but that's right. it was nice mm -hmm. to see uh a bunch of people you know especially the community that's uh formed around that building and stuff like the people that are coming out there and stuff so a lot of good things going on in and out of sight of gaslight there so yeah i think they've got a really great great team over there great engineers um i mean a, a thriving open mic every sunday um yeah, really, really fun people to be around, and lots of really great, great songwriters playing out there. So, mm -hmm. it's a great, you know, good community, like you said. Yeah. Um, I did the recording actually with Mark Cange. Um, so he he's the he did you know all the all the tracking, and then you know we worked on mixing it together. And he he was a really uh, he's a really talented individual. It's really great working with him. Yeah, man, very cool. Uh, that uh, yeah, I know a couple of the different some of the different uh, engineers over there and stuff and um but yeah they're all they we all uh, have a good ear for it and all and it's fun like that's one of some of my favorite things about it because like um you know just uh to watch it kind of come to life you know it's like there's this idea that of you and paper writing your lyrics down and and playing your guitar and stuff but then like getting going in there and into a studio space where you can actually make these songs come to life and and then finally at the you know when the engineer gets their hands on it and makes it the final product and stuff it's a lot of it's just a cool process to be a part of and things watching these things come to fruition yeah it sure is it's interesting too like how starting out with the with the ep i mean some of the tracks just didn't really like they just there was something missing so there there were a couple of times where i kind of went back to the drawing board and like rearranged a couple of those songs and it's really interesting for me to see how how different um like the end result can be mm -hmm. you know from what you envision whenever you start out you know working on a working on a record yeah well let's uh let's give him a little uh sneak peek at uh some of the recordings too uh while we're talking about it and uh you can find the stoker ep i guess uh, so on the it's it's under stoker stl.bandcamp.com right now you can head over there and download all three songs um we want to share a song called all along with you and uh
Is there anything you want to add around uh, this particular track? Why, uh, what it means to you, or the, some of the lyrics, or anything? Um, anything come to mind? Hmm. Yeah, that one's about maybe it maybe like at at the time in the moment you might not be sure that you know you're you're on the right path right but when you look back you're kind of at least for me you know i can kind of think like yeah like i'm glad i followed that you know mm-hmm. followed that path and i'm glad i am where i am now so it's kind of about maybe i should think about where i'm at now from that perspective you know like in the future maybe like maybe i got it maybe i'm getting it right mm-hmm. you know yeah nice man we're well, gonna uh, check out stokerstl.bandcamp.com today and uh download that do you uh do you have plans to get it on the other platforms or are you just gonna leave it there and uh for this long band camp for, for now for now it's gonna be on Bandcamp, but in the next you know few months i'd like to mm-hmm. expand and 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 Branch sure. out to SoundCloud, and right. I think um, everybody's telling me I need to get on Spotify. So yeah, I mean uh, that's where it seems like that's where everybody's at. Like mm-hmm. uh, you know, I know it's not the the most uh, lucrative of platforms, you know, for an artist, but it's it's great exposure to be. Uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of good things about it for sure and stuff. So um, I do feel Bandcamp's a lot more supportive of artists, and you you know we get. Um, but like I said, just uh, the convenience of having every song in your pocket on Spotify is pretty pretty nice. And the mm-hmm. fact that like uh, you can uh, you get lumped in with some of these other artists and stuff. You can get like a different list and things. And so it's like you, if you can get somebody to put you on a uh, playlist and stuff, might, who knows who might discover it and stuff. So it's so exciting to think about. So yeah. I got. Uh, you know, so I'm, I got my show on there, and it's interesting to see you get to listen to like all over the world and stuff. So it's it's pretty cool. That's really cool. Yeah, man. Well, you do also have physical CDs available of the EP. So uh, if you are not into uh, the digital platforms, you can also uh, get yourself a CD and mm-hmm. play, play it in the car or the house or whatever you want to do. But uh, so I guess we'll have those at any upcoming shows. Find uh, Stoker on Facebook to keep up with uh, more show info and stuff, and come see Joseph and the band live. Um, so, but you, uh, along with uh, physicals, we were kind of talking a bit off mic. You kind of told me you guys might be working on a, uh, you're working on a new project now, hopefully for the summer. But you're working on a, doing a vinyl release. Uh. That's right. We're working on a seven inch, so it's going to have. Uh Two, two tracks on it it's gonna have how it is which um is on the the joseph belcher ep um but on this on this seven inch it's gonna be like a full band version so mm-hmm. kind of taken taken up a notch in terms of like it's more like high octane you know like sure. rock and roll on the on the seven inch and there's also going to be a song called uh, decorate your room on there yeah nice and you uh you said you're recording that with with ryan I recorded that with Mark. Actually. Oh, Mar- oh, that's what. But Ryan's right. mixing it. You said, yeah, recorded recorded that with Mark um, at Gaslight, and then um, wrapped up all the mixing. And right now, it's uh, Ryan Wasoba yeah. is uh, doing doing the mastering on it. Oh, nice. So once he's you know once we get the thumbs up from him and uh, you know give it a listen, we'll move forward with getting the uh, seven inch pressed. Yeah, that's a uh, that's got to be. I mean, it's cool on CD, but like, obviously, looking around your room here, we got quite a few records mm-hmm. and stuff. So I imagine that's going to be quite the highlight to see your name stamped on a on a vinyl pressing and stuff. Absolutely, you know? yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, something about vinyl that you know you don't you don't get from just digital or even a CD. Mm-hmm. It's kind of its own its own thing. Do you remember your first record uh, you bought? Or, any, or anything come to mind? Early Good ones. Good question. Good question. My first. Hmm. I think one of my like. One of my like deepest music memories is uh, like finding Weezer's Blue Album, like 
a CD that had been like thrown out of somebody's car on the side of the highway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I found it, you know, and I was like, whoa, this looks cool, you know, and I like music. So I took it home, sure. uh, you know, and popped it in my, my CD player and, and like I was blown away. Right. But it's, it's like, it had been scratched so badly oh, by its yeah. like trip across the, the asphalt, you know? <laughs> right. So like almost none of the songs could play all the way through. So I just remember kind of like skipping through and, and like getting really into the song and then like, oh no, like now we got we to skip tracks, you know? <laughs> right. But yeah, yeah, growing up, like Weezer was a big, was a big uh, influence on me. Like one of my favorite bands. Yeah. Um, right on. Yeah, they, uh, I remember I was, I just, told the story not long ago but just your, your story reminded me of that there was a it was a funny time when so i used to high school you know growing up i had a bunch of binders full of cds and uh this is also in the era you know when everybody was making mix cds mm-hmm. and things and so, so i had all these like mix cds of the songs i made and and uh, so anyway, one some like, I think it was like, like hanging out after school for a football game or whatever it was, and somebody like swiped my binder of CDs, and and I was pretty bummed about it. And I'm like, and somebody then, swiped it? Yeah, like no. so. Uh, so then then I like fast forward though a few weeks or something like that. I'm on the other side of town, walking the street for some reason. I don't even remember why I was over that way, but like same same kind of situation like you. Like, something caught my eye. I pick it up and I flipped it over the CD, and it says Shane's mix on it. And I was like. Um, you know, I was like, what? Uh, I was like, what are the odds of that? But I would just so then there goes to, I imagine somebody's just cruising around trying to listen to some of my CDs and like, nah, this sucks. And just throw it right out the window and stuff. So I was like, they didn't even appreciate my good music. So anyway, was, uh, <laughs> that hurts yeah, a little bit. It's yeah, like, come on, right? Why didn't you, <laughs> why'd you throw out Shane's mix? Right. Yeah, man, I put a lot of effort into that uh-huh. mix. So, uh, but yeah, uh, so that's the kind of nice thing about with some of the digital now is like Lisa, some of that's all preserved. You don't have to worry about the skipping and the mm-hmm. the binder and everything else. But uh, I do love collecting records and CDs still. I love having the physical products and stuff. I love uh, supporting all my friends and buying uh, buying what I can. And it seems most of the artists I support these days are putting out records on on vinyl. So that's. Uh, it's really cool to see, man. Even locally, we got, uh, you know, like, um, uh, my buddy Nick Gusman just put out a mm. vinyl and uh, Bruiser Queen. And I know they always do a lot of vinyl and stuff. And, like, so a lot of friends from the show getting out there supporting vinyl. So it's cool to see for sure. Um, I don't know. I can't remember what my first uh, actual record I bought, vinyl. But I bought, uh, I remember... The first like uh, stuff that comes to mind when I think uh, like CDs and music and stuff that I wanted on my own, you know, I spent a lot of time listening to my parents' stuff, which mm-hmm. uh, I still do. I mean, I still listen to a lot of that st- same music. But um, I remember uh, like a Christmas, I got like Aerosmith's Greatest Hits and Pearl Jam Vitology. Very nice. Those were <laughs> those were two that come to mind really, like re- real early on memories of some of the music and stuff. That I, and then, but I mean, it's all over the place from after that. I remember uh, listening to a lot of uh, random CDs and stuff, just at, hanging out at the house and um, even or cassettes even too. Uh, I remember having like a rock set uh, cassette. Uh, hmm. I don't know if you ever got into them, but they're <laughs> kind of uh, like Swedish pop. Like from uh, kind of Ace of Base vibe, kind of in that vein too. Like same, same kind of stuff. <clears throat> but I had to check them out. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's just, I don't know. There's something about that stuff. Like it, I know it's corny and che- you know cheesy and stuff, but it's catchy and it's like it's some some good hooks for sure and stuff. So mm-hmm. I gotta appreciate some of that pop music. So yeah, for sure. I think my my band like that is Aha. I've always been like really into into aha i've got a i've got a aha vinyl <laughs> yeah. here <laughs> yeah uh, i think it's called scoundrel days right on um yeah <laughs> excuse me i don't really know a ton of aha really like i know uh obviously it's like take on me or whatever but mm-hmm. other than that i don't i don't know really a lot of their catalog so maybe uh pull it up and take yeah. a listen yeah they've got like most people know that take on me song sure. right but if you i mean 
there's some really good pop songs that band does. It's interesting. It's like of a different time, you know. Yeah. And like you'll they'll have these like wild synthesizer solos. All right. That like you can. I think it's just somebody like pressing a button and then they just just like kicks it off. It's hard to imagine somebody actually keying all the all this stuff in, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but the melodies are great and the songwriting is great. I don't know. I get a lot of <laughs> get a lot of energy from listening to that. Yeah. Nice man. Well, you uh, mentioned playing some live stuff, and we're working on some new material. Some, new, like I said, a couple of new songs coming out. Uh, but you did one uh, for me. These a couple unreleased ones that, uh, and you said one of these. Uh, is Tell me why mm-hmm. that hardly anybody's even heard besides a couple friends at a party the other night. That's right. Yeah, I played it. Played it the other night, and I. <coughs> Played it for a few friends in the area who go go up to the open mic. Yeah. So it's pretty much, you know, Shane. I think you're probably number number six probably <laughs> oh, to hear yeah, it. <laughs> Very cool. I I love that stuff. I love that like you know that people want to kind of debut some music on here and stuff because mm-hmm. this uh, feel you know feels good to kind of be one of the first people to hear it and stuff you never know where it could where where this might wind up and stuff so mm-hmm. um very exciting but uh yeah this this sounded really great man i was it's a beautiful song um and you were saying uh, so this is a little quite a bit different than even the ep or the band stuff so it's like um but uh so what what kind of where do you feel this song kind of came from where do these lyrics just kind of hit you one night and you start trying to write it all down or what's uh yeah, I think, you know, if you remember, you know, whenever we kind of ran into each other at Gaslight, it was kind of in the, in the like, wake of, of that, you right. know, losing, okay. a, losing a close friend, you know, and... Because um, I was going to say, there's definitely some, some heavy uh, lyrics in some of this. I was de- mm-hmm. definitely coming from more of a, a darker darker place and stuff. There's definitely uh, picked up on some of that in there, mm-hmm. so... Uh, yeah, I think one of the ways, you know, for me, like, to deal with, you know tragedy is to kind of channel it into into songwriting dark again don't give in you wanted something but you don't know what it is whispering on the wind Truths that will stay hidden from me And no one can tell me why No one can tell me why Sorry that didn't last Little pieces of what we had That didn't make the cut fill that space Puzzle pieces that show nothing when arranged Your voice carried on the wind Again, 
Don't give in Just needed someone who would Understand On, on that, I know it's tough though sometimes like I know obviously so many great songs that come from pain and uh, of some sort you know whether it's heartbreak or uh, you know losing someone or whatever it might be and um, it, you know I imagine like it's it's really great that people are open enough to to put it out there like that and stuff, tell their stories and put you know put it into a song and share with everybody because I think it is a, a therapy of sorts. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's good to just get it out there, but also I feel like it's almost like uh, kind of picking a scab every time you go to sing it. Sometimes you know it's like if you're putting that much emotion into some of these songs. And I mean, I'm not saying necessarily this particular song but just you know artists in general and stuff like you're putting all this out there and then like every time you sing it you got to kind of go back and relive that over and over and you know whatever that wherever that's coming from so uh yeah that's a really good point yeah you know we'll see five years from now if it's still something that i can you know sure i'll i want to i'll want to play but yeah but yeah man beautiful song yeah. uh, i'm excited uh uh for everybody else to hear it and um yeah man be uh be fun to take to the studio and get uh get the band on it maybe someday or something yeah. like that and see what happens with this thing so um <clears throat> but yeah man that was uh so again uh you can find everything stoker uh right now on your facebook page uh we will have some some shows coming up um so you uh you said you meant you said uh something about a house show coming up but uh you guys do a lot of that kind of stuff is that uh or do you prefer the venues and things because i think the house shows are really cool like mm -hmm. I, I, don't know, I like them because they're they're pretty intimate yeah, you know for sure. usually it's just kind of like a small group of people a lot of times you know everybody kind of crammed into the basement it can be uh like a really fun experience mm -hmm. um but we actually haven't done uh any house shows yet with the with the band but okay. it's gonna be it's gonna be our first one and uh i'm looking forward to it yeah, but of course, you know, I I love doing playing the venues too. Yeah, we got some really great venues in St. Louis. I've seen you guys uh, kind of uh, been over Heavy Anchor a couple times mm -hmm. and stuff. Kind of hang over there every now and then, and uh, so right. We, uh, but yeah, there's man, there's so many good places, and that's what uh, you know. We got newer new places opening up, and uh, we got. I mean, this summer is gonna be nuts for for St. Louis music mm -hmm. right now. I don't know what's going on this year, but I love it. Like. It's exciting to, to see and think about, and uh, but I mean, like we got, we're opening uh, that that St. Louis Music Park over by uh, the amphitheater, and uh, there's a another uh, one um, scheduled to open up soon, and uh, like uh, like uh, what's it, Midtown uh, area. Mm. Um, so, and then I think they're. I don't know. I think it's still a ways off, a couple of year, maybe a year or two. But uh, out in uh, Chesterfield, they're opening uh, one called the Music Factory out there. It's gonna be a, really, yeah. So that'd be like big, a. It's gonna be a venue. Yeah, like a pageant size, uh, like three thousand. Whoa, something people out there, okay. or something like that. So could be cool. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, I mean, and then like of course the tours that are coming through this year. Like I've talked about a lot how like. You know, in years past, it felt like we were every every uh, big tour skips over St. Louis. You know, they go to Kansas City or or uh, you know anywhere around us, but nobody was hardly stopping here in town. Like we, you know, we still got great shows, but it's like, but this year we're getting you know Stones and Dead Company and you know whatever. They just like <laughs> hit after hit. All these uh, big giant shows are coming to town, um, so it's really cool to see that. Uh, we're not being skipped anymore yeah so i think yeah. i think the news has kind of got out there that there was uh you know some break-ins or whatever so you know people so i think people were like scared they're gonna have their gear stolen or whatever it was and uh so I find, i'm glad we finally got up past that thing where people coming back to st louis so yeah me too i think um i hope people outside of St. Louis can can realize what a what a treasure it is here. You know, we've got such an eclectic music scene. Um, lots of great venues, lots of great bands. Yeah, man. 
Yeah, I love it here. I'm, I mean, I don't, it's only that's all I know. So I mean, I've been here all my life, but like, I love what we have happening, man. We got so much great music, so much great food. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the city is affordable, and there's a lot of fun options uh, as far as entertainment wise, even beyond music and stuff. There. You know, we just obviously, and I feel like the city's been reinvesting a lot into it. We're opening the aquarium and and stuff, and you know, so there's just like a lot of things happening and for really good stuff for for St. Louis right now. So it's exciting to see. It sure is. Um, you uh, do you have any uh, particular uh, favorite uh, local spots around? Like uh, maybe even just a uh, lunch or anything like that. Any uh, mm. local hangs where you like to you want to. Your favorite sandwich place or anything like that or well i do get takeout like almost once a week from a king and i yeah on south grand i love that place yeah um nice in terms of like lunch spots union loafers fantastic salad okay. you know their little gym salad i can't you know i forget it every time i go <laughs> sure <laughs> love love that salad um I know. I, I just like uh, you know. What about yeah? What about you? Uh, I don't, man, I'm, I'm, well, I love Oyster Bar, Broadway Oyster Bar. I hang out there. Obviously, that's my. Uh, also work there, but uh, the food is amazing down there all the, all the time. Um, and as far as like sandwiches, man, uh, I got to go Gramophone. Like it's just like oh, I do love Gramophone. I got yeah. Some, they sure do have some uh, tasty sandwiches over there. So, uh, and there's always great music. They do a lot to support a lot of my friends. So it's yeah. uh. It's cool to see a lot of them keep them working up there and stuff. So, uh, well, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, that I've been having fun answer, uh, asking some of these. And uh, do you uh, is there a dream duet or collaboration for you for for you or the band? I mean, if you had uh, somebody else you, uh, you'd like to collaborate with the band and stuff, and is it? Uh, rivers or uh, or something or what's uh what rivers como yeah what's, from, what's yeah the, what's the dream that man good that is a great question i'm like <sighs> hmm dream collaboration yeah i think i mean it could be it could be really cool to see you know like what if i could collaborate with rivers yeah. como oh yeah that, that, that would that would be incredible yeah um that's the fun stuff too. Like, uh, I've got to you know meet a handful of them myself. Just people that <clears throat> you know kind of grew up idolizing and stuff. And like, you finally get to meet some of your heroes. And mm-hmm. like, it's a, it's a it's a cool day, man. It's a cool moment to get to, a moment to you know shake their hand and say hey and tell them what you, they mean to you and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I think a big big one like that for me would be Getty Lee too. Oh yeah, yeah. My my dad's like the like a diehard Rush fan. You know, <laughs> yeah. the the music that we play in Stoker, like it's just not it's not quite like along the same lines as what is what you know Rush Rush plays. But I mean, it could be really cool to see what a what a collaboration between you know. What, I would love to see what Getty Lee would do, you know, on on some of the some of the Stoker songs. You know, yeah. give him a chance to write the write the bass lines. That'd be really neat. Yeah, man. Oh uh, yeah, and. Uh... R.I.P. Neil Pert, man. That was yeah, a, I know. That was a tough one for yeah, sure. Yeah, it was. So. It was really too bad. Um, yeah, one of the greatest drummers <laughs> ever. Yeah, no, nah, it's that's the thing. Like some some bands are able to find somebody to fill those shoes, uh, but I don't know anybody's gonna be able to play that. Play what Neil plays like that. Mm-hmm. That kid alone was insane. Like yep. Uh, so. Yeah, you get a full 360 degree kit, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not not many. I'm, I don't think I've actually ever seen any other band have have a kit like that. Right. You know. Yep. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that anybody will be able to do anything like that again. But uh, <clears throat> what's a uh, what's a song you wish you wrote? Hmm. Is there any anything come to hmm. mind? Hmm. I'm thinking I might like I might go to I want to say like the band does a we, we do a cover of uh, Needle in the Hay by Elliot Smith so okay. I think that would be that would be one 
it's got this like you know like darkness to it this rawness to it sure and it like i don't know i think it's a really great song yeah nice man what's a movie or tv show you wish you were in hmm Hmm. You get into much of movies and TV at all? I'm trying to think, cause like all the, like the TV shows, like I've been wa- I've been watching you, you know. I don't want to be, I don't want to be in that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. It seems like everybody ends up dead in that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh man, yeah, sure. I'm a I'm a big fan of The Office. You like I, The Office? Yeah, I think it'd be fun to be in there. Okay, just because is uh, I don't know that <laughs> just imagine that'd be a good time. I, I I could see like I don't know because I look at these shows and and like the like level of drama is so high. Otherwise, it's not a show, and I don't know if I want that much drama in my life, yeah. you know. But I, I I could see it would be interesting to be in like a Medici. Or whatever, however you say that, you know, Medici, Medici, is a show. There, that's a show on Netflix. Okay. It's like, kind of like a political intrigue show, you know, All right. like a family, you know, fighting against another family to like have power over the city. Okay, could be interesting to be, yeah, you know, embroiled in like the the plots, but I don't know. Yeah. I actually don't know how much yeah. how enjoyable that would be. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh what's uh what's something you tried but will never do again hmm you ever do any like skydiving or anything or any of that kind of crazy stuff never did any skydiving yeah man like these are all really great great (laughs) questions i like have never i've never (laughs) thought up answers to like half of this stuff right um hmm. or it could be food gotcha. or whatever it is you know whatever you, whatever you interpret it something i tried but i'll never try again i got one for you I, okay what well, yeah i need i think i need an example i don't know that i'd ever run with this uh so i went to uh um uh, I, I guess I, I don't know. Maybe I tried again. Probably not though. But I, uh, I went, to, I went to see my buddy Brad play one night, and it was this uh, little small town Illinois thing, and they were having a testicle festival. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. and they were having uh, serving up uh, deep fried testicles, and they, they serve them like sliced. With like ranch, they're like breaded and like cat, uh, like uh, like a f- catfish uh, batter type of thing and stuff or whatever. So like, and then like they, you dip them like pickle chips and ranch and eat them. And I'm like, it's just really weird uh, eating uh, testicles. So uh, I don't know that I'd do that again. Yeah. How was so, it? Like, what it what was the consistency? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's with the breading and the ranch. I mean, it tastes like chicken or fish mm-hmm. or whatever. You know, it's like it all. It don't really taste anything. It's all you taste is that seasoning on mm. there. So it's like, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It was it was just it was more <laughs> more mental thing. You know, it's like not that like I'm homophobic or whatever anything. You know, the testicles don't bother me. It's just weird to eat that uh, that it's uh eating testicles like it just doesn't seem right (laughs) yeah something does seem wrong you know (laughs) something seems wrong about that yeah Yeah. that might be on a list of things i might you know i might never try right well and that's the only reason i did it because i was Mm -hmm. like hey i mean this might how many times you go to a testicle festival and stuff so it's like so i figured you know when in rome right so i figured if i'd participate while i was there so um yeah but I don't, I don't know that I'd. That'll probably be it. Well, I'm done. I think I'm retire after that. Hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So nothing coming to mind. No? Nothing is coming to mind. Not I don't right. know. Like I. Yep. Why? Why is nothing coming to mind? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe I've just avoided all the stuff I would sure. never, you know, never yeah. do. We we'll just black that out after after we can't forget about that now. Uh, do you do any celebrity impressions? 
Oh, man. I don't. No. I don't typically do that. Mm. <laughs> do you? No, I don't. I could see maybe you might have a mean Sean Connery. Oh, uh, I don't know. Maybe, I feel like anything I do is just somebody else's version of it, like that I've, you know, I'm watching enough SNL or whatever it is and stuff, do somebody else's uh, version of the impression thing. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um. I do, you know, there's a Jim Carrey line that, I, that I'll that i say sometimes if it's like a really tight squeeze for my car. He's got that, sure. like a glove, <laughs> you know, yeah. you ever see uh Well, I do a lot Ace of Ventura. that. Sure, yeah, for sure. I do a lot of that. Like, uh, that's the thing. I feel like, uh, I mean, that's all that goes on in my head all day is movie quotes and songs and mm. lyrics mm-hmm. and stuff. So it's like, uh, so yeah, I do like, uh, do... I guess, I don't know. I don't really consider them impressions, but like I definitely drop a lot of movie quotes and stuff. Uh, I was talking about the other day with a buddy. We got we do a lot of uh, Sling Blade at work and stuff. Me and my buddy. Oh, my God, me and really? Me my buddy Ray will do, will do that voice a lot. Okay. And, uh, and I don't know. Not really. I don't really consider it an impression again. It's just like, I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. I just, but like you just get doing that voice and stuff. It's fun, it's, it's fun to do it. And, but you, <laughs> yeah, you get like to the, like, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. You got uh-huh. it. You got in them rub but they remember. So, uh, well, that's uh, those are fun, fun to do with them little characters. Um, I'm called a cash blade. I like to call it a sling blade. <laughs> so, yep. yep. Nice. <laughs> that's a dark one to pick yeah. too. Oh yeah. Yeah, that movie's uh kind of twisted, man. Mm-hmm. But it's good. That's a that's a great movie. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> well, let's uh let's close this thing out with a uh, one more tune. We did uh, another brand new one, uh, uh, previously unreleased, uh, called Birdcage, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it's the working title. Yeah, work. Yeah, working title. Uh, what? Uh, and this is uh, an, just another gr- really great song, man. Like I, I really, uh, I don't know, like. There's a lot of imagery and stuff, obviously, with the bird bird and bird cage and stuff. So that's where my brain goes a lot. When I, Sometimes when I hear songs, I'll start kind of almost like uh, imagining the music video or, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Like start kind of putting the visuals together in my head and of what, what's going on in the song sometimes. And um, so obviously something like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's... It was interesting, man. So anyway, what what uh what would you like to share around Birdcage? Is there anything uh anything particular around this particular song for you? Hmm. I mean, I think this one I think this one's about maybe finding that routine and how like even though it can be it can really help you like you know get stuff done and and like fulfill all your responsibilities it kind of it can kind of feel like a like a cage sometimes you know but like i think for me like i'm kind of a creature of habit like i know i need i know i need that that routine right but at the same time i also am a free spirit so it's like i want to have the you know i want to be able to fly free too sure. so it's kind of a like where does that where does that leave you Take on your illusion to escape myself Asking the right questions, appearing to be well I'm just a bird looking for a cage I'm just a bird, it's a feeling I can't shake And we'll follow what we can't explain Up with ways of teaching our bodies to be tamed Contemplate your notions Hypothesize about the times to come Stuck in situations 
I can't help but make Taking some delight in All the simple things I'm just a bird Looking for a cage I'm just a bird It's a feeling I can't shake Getting a feeling that I can't quite shake. I'm just a bird looking for a cage. I'm just a bird. It's a feeling I can't shake. Can't play the notions about the I'm just a bird It's a feeling I can't shake I'm just a bird Looking for a cage I'm just a bird It's a feeling I can't shake I try to balance. I try to walk that line, you know. It's like where where I get to do stuff I want to do, but there's also structure structure enough to it where I have a routine and mm-hmm. you know where. So, uh, you know, I like I like going to all the concerts and doing all the fun stuff, and you know, doing the podcast and whatever, all these different things. But I still have my. 40 hours a week uh, with health insurance and benefits mm-hmm. and, and that kind of stuff. So it's like, you know, I, so I get to be, I get, uh, you know, that's my structure, my Monday through Friday, my, you know, everything else, keep my bills paid and things, but I also allows me freedom and uh, flexibility to do all the creative side of what I want to do and mm-hmm. stuff. So, uh, so anyway, I feel like I try to try to, you know, keep it balanced with that way. Yeah, absolutely. I totally feel you there. It's the same story for me, you know. Yeah. It'd be great if music, you know, w- was was paying the bills. Sure. <laughs> but, you know, that's just not the situation I'm in right now, and it's it's kind of a symbiotic relationship between that, you know, that job and, and then the creative, you know, aspect of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well hopefully uh, after this podcast, everybody, uh, things will take off for you. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm optimistic that yeah. that's going to be the case. I hope so, man. I uh, no, I uh, I make I, I don't know. I I have a, a fairly decent following, but I, I I make that joke a lot. It's like I did one with uh, my buddy Bobby, and and then um, he ended up actually getting uh, open for Dave Chappelle when he uh, was at the pageant a couple of years back. And wow, so I was like, obviously I didn't have anything to do with that. But I was making the joke, like, yeah, I mean, he did the podcast, and the next thing you know, he's opening for Dave Chappelle. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's how it works. Clear relationships. Yep. So, like, <laughs> nah. so uh, you know, so I don't know. But it, it's just I feel I'm so proud of my friends when they get to do those exciting things like that. You know, so it's like really it's so cool to see when, when they, you know, we, we get to hang out, and then all of a sudden they get to do those crazy opportunities. So it's uh Makes me proud that people are grinding and making the opportunities happen mm-hmm. for themselves and stuff. So it's great seeing that hard work pay off for yeah, sure. And I just want to be uh, be the a giant cheerleader for them all, you know, just to get out there and support my friends. So, um, but you can do that too if you're listening. Uh, head on over again, uh, download uh, these <clears throat> brand new EP at stokerstl.bandcamp.com and uh, throw Joseph a couple bucks for this uh, CD and. Keep supporting the music, and uh, we'll get some more new stuff coming soon. Like I said, that 7-inch coming this summer, so uh, that'll be really exciting, man. I'm excited to see what else is in store for you and the band. So I appreciate you uh, taking some time to hang today and have yeah. me over. Thanks a lot for you know let, letting me get on the show. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's been great. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, it was a ton of fun, man. I really And I really dig what 
those new songs so i'm excited for everybody to hear those and see what they say about them so um but uh yeah thanks buddy i'll see you soon thanks a lot bye everybody bye everybody Rock paper podcast. Rock paper podcast. Rock paper podcast. Well, yeah, that was it.